John Peter Smith was uh, from a small town in Kentucky, and at some point in time, he started down the Mississippi by riverboat and ended up in New Orleans. He was an orphan, came by horseback to Texas, and becomes philanthropic the day he gets here. He, he taught school for a while. He was an attorney and... He came here and helped with the railroad building here. Thank God for John Peter Smith that he had the foresight and vision to give the land and have a place that we could take care of those who were in need. He didn't say just the poor. He didn't say people who were downtrodden. He said, let's take care of our community. He was just somebody that looked for opportunity to do things that would help people in their day-to-day -day lives. And I think it transcended into the development of the hospital and the start of the hospital. He felt that everyone deserved the same right, that they should all have the right to education and health care. And that's what this place does. So all of us sort of try to live that mission. I had a big misconception about JPS when my son was first admitted to the hospital. When I was here as a patient, I thought that, isn't this a place that, that poor people come to? And the community perception has only changed when somebody has to come here. Opening your doors is the beginning. The leadership that was here and starting to make cultural changes in 2009 were absolutely what I wanted to be involved with. Through the years, we watched JPS grow and change. It has dramatically changed. I was here during the previous leadership, and so I have been a, a part and watched that transformation happen. We've seen a tremendous change in the culture. It's contagious, and it's filtered down throughout the hospital, but more than that, it's filtered throughout all levels of the city. I think the state of the health network is one of pride, first of all. You can't provide care if you don't have pride in, in where you work and how you work and how you deliver that. This is not any longer the place you don't want to go to or the place you want to drive by and pretend it doesn't exist. Anyone you encounter here is very warm and caring, and that has just gradually changed under the direction of the board and the leadership the last few years. I have profound respect for what the leadership here has done in terms of really upgrading the service to the point where we're now competitive really with any national hospital of our type. People should be, and rightfully so, but are very proud of what's going on at JPS. A level one trauma center where we send our own officers, firefighters, anyone in the city involved in an accident. When you look back seven years ago at the emergency department and you saw that there was 21% of the people that left without being seen, and now you look and you find that that number's 4%, you know you're doing the right thing. When you look at the third time the American College of Surgeons had come in here and said, yes, you've met our expectations once again, you know you're starting to do the right thing. People have left the mindset of a county hospital. I've been blown away by JPS since I started working here. I don't think I had this level of commitment and passion about what we do when I first got here, but I can't imagine being anywhere else. We have three basic rules at JPS. One, you gotta own it. Two, you have to seek joy, and three, you can't be a jerk. And those three rules have become sort of the fabric of every initiative and every implementation. Having everyone sort of circling around that as sort of our common war cry or mantra, if you will, um, has really been a cultural change. I've worked at places a fraction of this size that don't have the sense of team that we have here. Nothing makes you want to try harder than, than your teammates trying for you. You walk down the halls of JPS and you can tell that the people who work here are proud to be here. They understand that they are playing a valuable role, not only in the lives of the patients that they're serving, but in the community that they're serving. Everyone that works here now gets that. It's a full partner in meeting the health care needs of, of all Tarrant County citizens, whether it's a visiting dignitary with an emergency, a citizen that, that finds himself in a, in a desperate health care situation, 
or the tens of thousands who look to John Peter Smith as their, as their health care home. It's probably no less than every two weeks that I get a call from some other hospital system in the country wanting to talk to us about some aspect of our behavioral health program and what we've done here in Tarrant County and how they might be able to implement something similar to that in their community. Our patient satisfaction has gone up tremendously because of this. We've received many national designations and commendations for the level of quality care that's provided at JPS Health Network. We're amazing. We, we are doing amazing work. We were selected the most improved large hospital for patient satisfaction scores. That was amongst all hospitals in the nation. To get an award that says you guys have really improved and we notice it makes a big difference. Well, you know, Fort Worth is a big city now, 833,000 people, and to be there, you have to have a medical center that reaches out and touches all level of people. You look at Turner County, we're gonna have two million people in no time. And you know, with growth, you've gotta have facilities, infrastructure, and everything in place. If our health network isn't strong, it's not good for our whole community. John Peter Smith is championing that commitment to wellness and reaching out all across the county with clinics, with education programs, partnerships with the other hospitals. When I started as CEO here, our daily census in our emergency room was 175 people a day. Today, our census is probably gonna be 380. We have got to grow. We've got to continue to figure out how we expand an ICU in trauma care and an ED. Your local tax dollar is 40% of our budget. We've got 60% to come elsewhere. And so we try and think through and make what we call win-win-wins. Wins for the patient, wins for the hospital, and wins for the taxpayer. So I get all of my health care at JPS. I get my primary care through Dr. Haynes, the employee clinic here. And just recently, I had my son at JPS. I had a complicated pregnancy, and when I started out, I wasn't planning on having him at JPS. But as things started to get more into my pregnancy, and I realized how serious it could be, I switched my care over. I will never regret that decision. My son was born at 33 weeks and I had to leave him. So leaving your baby at the hospital is never something that you wanna do and for my husband and I, it was very difficult. Just the thought of having to leave him at another hospital in another NICU when I didn't know that they would love him and be there for him when I couldn't. I'm so thankful that he was at JPS and not anywhere else. A story that I like to tell to describe that heart best of all is of a trauma case whereby a family was involved in a car wreck. The family got separated because pediatrics is best taken care of by those experts. So the child went to uh, Cook, which is a pediatric facility, and that child's mother came here. The child's mother uh, had injuries so much that they uh, required surgery immediately. As the night progressed, it became evident to us that that uh, child was not going to survive. So as soon as that was known, our trauma surgeons arranged for an ambulance trip with that mother and one of our physicians to go over to Cook so that mother could say goodbye to that child and be with that child. That's the kind of heart that JPS has, and that's why I'm involved in it. March 15th, 2016, uh, and it started like any other regular day. I went and met a buddy of mine, that, uh, my old partner, who had transferred to our canine unit, and we had some breakfast. Went to leave because I knew I needed to go get some work done. So I told my, my friends, you know, it's kind of been kind of a boring day, so I'm going to go out to my beat and start answering some calls, see what I can get, get into heard a pursuit kind of start. I wasn't super close to it, but I heard it was kind of headed out towards my beat. So we kind of raced out to West Fort Worth, and about that time, all I knew was it was coming right at me. So I got into the mix of things, and through all the melee that ensued, I was shot five times. It's the worst call anyone gets, and it, as mayor, it's particularly disturbing. They said, Mayor, you need to go to the hospital immediately. I remember a bunch of my officers showing up, getting me out of there. I was conscious the whole time. I remember getting on the helicopter, and I remember hearing one of the flight nurses say, uh, where are we going? And I thought she was talking to me. I, I to this day don't know if she was talking to me or not, but I thought she was talking to me, so I said, we're going to JPS. And she said, well, I don't know that we can go there. Uh, and I kind of I looked at her dead in the eye, and I said, you're going to take me to JPS. I remember us taking off, 
And I remember landing and I remember getting off of the flight caught and onto the ER uh, bed and I don't remember anything after that. And I didn't even then, I did, wasn't even, I wasn't sure where I'd landed, I just remember landing. We were told that Matt probably would not survive. And the second they wheeled him in, he was taken to the very best of care. His family was treated like royalty. All our officers come when an officer is injured or shot. I looked at my mom, because she's the first person I saw, and I said, you know, how long have I been asleep? You know, two or three days? And she said, oh no, try two and a half weeks. It was just one of those life-changing experiences. It's a well-known fact amongst us in the police department that if you get shot or you get into a major accident or anything trauma-related that we go to JPS. I really believe in this. I believe in the doctors. I mean, when I came in, you wouldn't find a doctor on the planet that expected me to live, um, but they did their very best, and they gave me the every chance possible to live, and, and it worked. I don't know that I would be able to put enough emphasis on the importance of JPS in the, in the community. Um, I really don't think this community would be what it is without JPS. A lot of folks may ask, why JPS? Well, because they saved my life on March 15th, and years could be next.